Hello, this is my tier list for Breeze. Um, it's going to take um, not too long because I'm, I want to be quite fast with this tier list because things can change quite often. Um, Breeze is one of these maps that could change and I just thought that I want to do a quick tier list to kind of give my quick opinions on the agents on this map um, and the sort of like the, the meta on this map. And I thought that this might be a decent way to do it because I want to talk about all the agents as well. Um, so I'm going to talk about Astra first. So I think Astra is around the B tier. She's around average. The reason why is because, well, this is a sort of melded list of competitive and ranked. I think she's definitely decent on the competitive side. You can see a lot of, she might even see a decent amount of play on the competitive side. Because I think as a second controller, she can bring a lot to the table. Her fake stars bring a lot to the table with like faking, which Viper can be good at too. So then you can really play the mind games on attack. She also has the wall to replace the other uh, controller's wall if they die in the round or something like that. Um, she also has the stars, um, like the, the suck and the, the stun, which is really, really nice for the actual map itself because the way the map's designed, it has concentrated pieces of space, sorry, pieces of, of uh, cover, and then it has open space around it. Um, a lot of open space around it. So if you push people out of that cover, they don't have anywhere to go. So she's got two abilities that really help to do that, to so push those people out of that space. And that's going to be a recurring theme with some of these agents that I think are decent. And I think that Astra is going to be one that you might see play in, in the competitive, but I think she's not going to be anywhere to be seen in ranked because I think solo controller is what's going to be played in ranked most of the time. And she's not a very good solo controller on this map. I think she really does require to have a second controller that's a Viper or a Harbour, maybe an Omen um, on this map, uh, maybe Brimstone, uh, literally any other controller, but uh, yeah, she just needs one. Um, next is Breach. Um, Breach is one of those agents that kind of uh, got way too much pl play, to be honest. I think he's like super easy to play, um, but I think teams maybe, there's some teams that maybe were a bit lazy, some teams that fit their star really well. Um, but essentially, like for instance, Fnatic fit their style really well. Regimented play style fits Breach quite nicely. Where you can fit him into strats, he's really easy to fit into strats and really easy to play mechanically, really easy in general. But he doesn't really have like the the the, the high rewards that you might get from other agents in his in his slot. Um, and he can be really really tough to play sometimes against good players because um, he can just have like. Um, way too much set value if that makes sense for instance like his flash is always the same timing right you have to mix up the position of the flash rather than the timing of the flash because the timing of the flash is always the same when you see it so he doesn't really have that skills cap like ko sky does um so even even phoenix so i think that he does like he doesn't really he's not really that strong as an agent overall and i think teams should start to realize that he's actually not been that strong i've been saying it for years to be honest but um, hopefully people will see it now, um, especially because I think there was a stats, stats that came out that was like one of the worst agents statistically. So hopefully people will listen to the stats if they don't listen to um, like reason, I guess. Um, the next is Bre uh, Brim. So Brim, and uh, sorry, just talking about Breach, uh, Breach as a side on Breeze in particular, he's, the map isn't very well suited for him. So that's the reason why he's C. But the reason why he's not D is because he's just that easy to play. Um, I wasn't sure if I was really touch on that properly, but Brim Brim is next, and I think Brim is not bad. Um, he likes like again once again he likes the map design, so he likes it being like some tight space together, like some tight um, uh, cover together. But then he doesn't like, and then he, then the open space next to it. But um, and he has like really lethal um like ways to control that space or his molly right or his ult. Um, problem is it is his ult, so he doesn't have it all the time really. Um, he doesn't have the opportunity all the time. Um, his triple flashes, so triple smokes, are nice compared to Astra, um, but he doesn't have the wall, um, so he's not really that insane compared to Astra. I think he's more like the, he's like the solo queue version of Astra, I would say, where he's got he can kind of be played in the solo smoke position sometimes. Um, I think in ranked it doesn't actually matter that much. I think he can easily be played um, solo smokes um, in ranked in lower elos especially. Um, I think in in like high reload, I don't think he's. I mean, people are going to try min max as much as possible in high reload, so. It would make sense to play him um but in thinking in low elos you can definitely get away with playing him solo um so next is chamber s tier um not really much to say i think he's always been strong um, even despite his nerfs I mean, he was always able to get the first fight and if you could find ways to get like a 70 30 fight at the start he could just completely fry your team um because he could always get first blood um and live so he's honestly always been good like that way uh good that way even despite his nerfs, and he's going to be an operator user, so on this map, 
Um, he gets good sight lines. He's just generally good at fighting, and Breeze favors fighting. Um, even less so than used to, but still. Um, and I think yeah, he's gonna be S tier. He can wield the op, and there's plenty of people competing for the op spot. But I think Chamber might be the front runner for the op spot. And I think there's gonna be other agents that kind of compete for it too. You probably already know one of them, but I will also talk about the rest um, at some point when we get to them. So Cipher is A tier for me. He got worse because I think lurking in general got harder on this map. Um, I also think on defense he's less needed because halls is not open. So therefore lurkers can't go up there. So he's nerfed on attack because he can't lurk up there. And on defense he's nerfed because he doesn't technically need to use it there. So I say, I, say, I say that's a nerf as well. Technically it's a buff, right? Because he doesn't have to put it there. So therefore he can put his util elsewhere. So it actually is a buff to him individually. But when it comes to constructing the comp, because that's not needed... He starts to get looked over because now we can look at other things that other agents do because we don't need to put the trap there, if that makes sense. So he starts to get overlooked a bit more because he doesn't need, you don't need him. Um, and I think he got nerfed because of that, right? He got nerfed because now you don't actually need him a whole lot. And Viper can actually replace him completely, I think, um, on this map. Although I do think he's still strong on the map and I think he'll see play ranked. In competitive, I don't think he's going to see that much play. He might do, especially in Americas, but I think in other regions, he's going to be skipped over. Um, Deadlock, D tier, need I say more? Um, she is just the weakest agent in the game. On this map, she's going to struggle even more than she does on other maps. There's some maps that she does have good maps. Funnily enough, Pearl rotated down and Pearl was one of her better maps. So yeah, kind of sucks for her. Um, she's kind of useless on this map. Uh, Gecko I've got in C tier. This might just be because I don't I haven't played around with him as much, but I think he's not the strongest on this map because he doesn't really have good dizzy pathing. Uh, he has some good wingman paths. Doesn't have great dizzy paths. Can't really recover his orbs very easily unless you actually execute. Because the way that he plays, he, that he wants to take small amounts of space and then get his orb back and then do it again, right? Um, that's like how he likes to play. He likes to take small spaces with dizzy and wingman um, and then either insert and leave or or something like that, right? Um, something along that nature, and then go do it somewhere else. He likes to do that. He likes to do that. But the problem is, is that on Breeze, it don't it doesn't really play like that. The map doesn't play like that, really. Um, it plays like that a tiny bit in mid, but not anywhere else. So when you go mid, so basically, and he's not really the greatest at taking mid on this map. He's not bad, but he's not good. So he's just going to struggle to compete for a good for a slot, I think. Um, and I think in general, like it might be because I just lack the knowledge on this map. Sorry, on, on the Gecko for this map. But I think he's quite strong. I don't think he's quite strong, but it's like a question mark to me. Like, he could easily move up if I learn more. Um, but I think, like, 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 to be fair, the actual dog and the mosh pit, I think, are like the two better abilities for him, funnily enough, on this map. When usually a good map for Gecko, Dizzy and Wingman are the two best are the two best ones. To be fair, the Wingman plants probably aren't bad, though. To be fair. Maybe he isn't too, too bad. He might be B. But I'm going to just say he's at like the top of C uh, for now until I learn more. Uh, Harbour is S tier, the easiest S tier of my life. Cascades, cascades are really, really broken with all the initiators you have. Um, double wall meta. He's going to be able to wall up when Viper walls go down. Then when his wall goes down, Viper will wall up. And then he, he can use his wall after that. So <laughs> it's just the most broken thing to have double walls in this map sometimes. Um, well, not sometimes. It is the most broken thing. Cascades help your initiators play because they can... What they can like dog for free out, out places they can get tutored flashes so you can cascade the back part of a off and then you can just flash the front part of sight from part of a and then you know that the front part of a is clear um things like that right um is really really strong so i don't really feel like i need to explain um his his um him that much his ult is also really strong on b um especially on b because with the back where the back hall is if you actually peek the back hall when his ult is on and you know someone's there they don't have an option to dodge the dodge the um dodge the stun and move side to side versus you, right? So they can't move across your screen. They have to move up and down on your screen. Sorry, like forward and backwards on your screen. Which means that they're not actually getting um they're not actually like fighting properly, right? They they can't fight you properly because they have to they want to dodge the stun, but they also are just moving forward and backwards. So that they're ahead only getting like a tiny bit bigger and smaller. So it's really easy to headshot them. When they're moving side to side, it's obviously hard, right? And that's how they would actually normally fight. But when you've got your ult and you fight the back holes, they can't do that. So they get stunned or they 
and they get stunned and fight you properly, like movement wise. Or they don't move properly and they don't get stunned, but you probably kill them anyway. So he's actually really, really strong on backside. It's quite funny. Um, so on fade, so we got fade. I think fade is like beat here, but it is skeptical. So she definitely struggles because she's got lack of range on this map. But overall, like her other, like her actual abilities make sense in practice. Um, and it, they're not in practice. Makes sense in theory, but in practice, like the it's just the 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 length of her abilities, like the the range of her abilities, just really hold her back on this map with such a big map. Her ult is pretty good. The decay is pretty nice on this map sometimes. Um, with some of the fights you're gonna take, right? Then being decayed is quite a big advantage if you're just taking fights. But generally, she's a struggle on this map because of her range. Um, parallels don't get that much value. I mean, they're not terrible because of the double war. So when when they've got when you've got double wall agents in the map, generally Sky and Fade are going to be the better two because they're very good at checking those walls, those pockets of space that the walls create. So Fade isn't terrible for that reason, but she just really struggles because it's such an open big map. Um, Jet is A tier, so this might surprise you that I've put her in A tier, and you'll actually see why. But that's because I just think Chamber is the premier operator option, um, and I think Jet is very close second. I think she's probably the closest as an operator player, as like an operator agent. But I think her nerfs definitely did like hurt her on this map, the double up draft especially, because there are parts in this map that really benefit from having her, her, her up draft, right? Parts of the two parts on B, there's the parts on A, the, the pyramids, there's boxes, there's there's all these things that she really does benefit from having up draft. And having one can kind of be kind of sad. She also can't take that first fight infinitely, like Chamber can, she, she can't just sit on an off angle and wait. She also has to worry about the actual geometry of the map as well. She can't just dash through a wall. She has to dash in like a very like potential, potentially predictable position. Or Chamber can sit next to a wall in a corner and be in a complete off angle. So I think, and honestly, those first fights are more important on this map than, like, much more important on this map basically than the fights that Jet would probably take. Um, also, I think Chamber just in general, just it just has the advantage of that first fight that that Jet does. Um, Jet has to have a like, lot more foresight than Chamber has to have. Um, but Chamber has to maybe have a tiny bit better macro um, in terms of like predicting where they're going to go and things like that. But that's like so minuscule difference, I think. Um, Ko, um, I've got an A tier um, as well. I think he's at like, the top of A tier. I think he's really close to S tier. The reason why he's not S tier is because I just think there's two agents that are maybe a bit better than him. Mainly one agent that's better than him. I think the double walls don't really help him too much. Um, but his, his silence is really, really strong. On defense where you stop them from coming out especially good versus viper as well i don't think many people realize this that because viper presses her buttons a lot more right she presses them a lot more she has to press the wall constantly right like she wants to press the wall constantly up and down things like that right you can really stop her from being strong when she has eight like if you choose the right eight seconds she can be really really weak in that eight seconds because she just can't do the main thing that she's meant to do and it can make the whole like macro player the enemy team predictable because of the way that um like because she was silenced right like she can like um she like stops someone from being spotted normally and then she gets silenced she can't stop that person from being spotted before it's ready for like the fire right that's just one example but generally she's not really strong because he's, he's really really strong because he can silence her to stop her from keep doing the annoying things that she's doing um and then in general he's really really strong at stopping people from coming out on the sites molly and the silence is nice. The flashes are nice, but they're not great um, compared to Sky flashes because of the lack of info. And she really and the info is really really important. Versus double uh, walls for the the pockets of space. Um, next we have a Killjoy who's in C tier. I don't think anyone really is on the same level as Deadlock useless. I think Killjoy does have some things where I think on B on defense she has decent options. So for that reason, I do put her in C. But other than that, I think she's pretty weak. Uh, her ult isn't too great. It's not terrible on defense on B. Um, not terrible on defense on A. Um, but generally, it's going to get like destroyed on A. They have to fight for it, basically. You're just forcing them to try and fight you um, on A. Yes, yeah, generally, she's just super weak. Um, she needs like these. She needs the map to be made a lot more of more concurrent cover than, than cover, open space, cover, open space. She really wants just a bunch of cover basically, and then, like, some open spaces to punish in. She doesn't really, like, Ascent, for instance, but she doesn't really want, like, these, like, massive open spaces like Breeze. She doesn't like that, that amount of open space. Um, Neon is actually in A tier, so she's really close to S as well. Um, actually, wait, mm, 
No, I'm gonna keep her in A. So actually, no, I'm gonna put her. I'm putting her in S. Actually, I think the reason why Neon is S for me is because I think she just brings a lot more value to the table. She can play B, so she 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 can attack A A pretty easily. She can attack mid pretty easily. She can attack B pretty easily. The difference is, to be fair though, she doesn't. She's not very good in ranked as much, but in competitive, she can be really really strong when paired with the right people, right paired with the right agents, and with the right strats. You will struggle struggle on ranked, um, I think, uh, properly, especially well in like lower elos. I think in rank, in like higher elos should be fine, because uh, people understand how to play with her. I also think she is also one of those agents that can pick up the op. Um, so because the way that she kind of can op as well is that she is able to get into good timings um, at the start of the round with her with her capability to run, um, like runs full sprint. Um, and also she can full sprint to rotate, so she can take an op shot on B, for instance, then sprint it to A, and then when, by the time like they come out A, if they decide to rotate against the op, then the op is still there. The op is there in A, and then they can get she can get another kill. So she's really strong for that reason. Um, and you probably will imagine after I said that, like some other agents that might be strong uh, with the op. Whether you probably won't uh, won't, re won't realize this one. So Omen is on A tier for me as well. I think he has the most chance of being. The secondary smoke other than harbor um, on this map and uh, mainly because i think that he might be picked up from his time on icebox being like potentially a duelist like um fallback such as like a uh, hundred thieves like crow cells playing omen and um, i think there's a chance that he might he might be the same um and that omen might actually be picked up by some duelists on this map um but i don't know really i think teams are going to favor the, the chamber but they might have both um realistically uh, but we'll see i mean Maybe they won't. Maybe some teams won't value the the chamber either, and they'll go with Omen uh, Operator. Um, it just depends on the team, really. Um, I do think he has the strength. His smokes aren't terrible. He can split up more places on the site. His TPs are, can be really, really strong. His paranoia is pretty weak on this map overall, um, but his ult as well is kind of weak on this map too. But it is a very big map, so it does help him a tiny bit to traverse the full map. Um, he can like lurk in those sort of situations too, so he can lurk. Get a kill, join his team. Um, doesn't have to run all the way around the map like other lurkers might do. So, and obviously lurking get harder. So he might actually open up his team to for better lurks to have this sort of TP available. So maybe he can see play like that too. Um, but we'll have to see. I think he's also quite a big question mark for me whether he actually gets play or not. Um, Phoenix, I won't really touch on too much. Doesn't really have access to all orbs on defense, which is one of the main indicators to me that he's going to be strong or weak. Um, depending, or at least in ranked anyway. Um, if he's not got access to that many orbs on defense, it might be really hard for him to get his ult consistently. Um, and then his wall isn't terrible. Um, and aside from that, he doesn't really do too much. He, he likes to have enough cover to use his, his flashes nicely. Um, but he does get the wall, so it is quite nice there. But he likes to have enough corners to kind of use his flashes effectively. And he likes the open space. But the problem is it's just like an imbalance right now for him on Breeze. He likes to have a tiny bit more cover than this. To use his flashes effectively um although he does like the open space to then punish the people in the open space that are full flashed basically he likes that but he doesn't like the lack of corners and cover that there is to flash from so that's the reason why i think he's a bit c he might actually be b um i'm actually going to put him like towards the top um raise i think is very close to s tier as well so i think she's actually higher more chance than than jet of being played um, the reason why is because I think if Cypher gets, Chamber gets played, sorry, then I think Jet might, uh, sorry, Raze might be played as well. Um, there's a chance, depending on, you know, double initiate, double controller, then I don't think Raze will be played. Maybe it'd be Chamber. Depends on if the team likes the Viper Sentinel, um, like to be like the Sentinel type role, but then they might actually play the Raze instead, uh, or the Neon, something like that. Um, but basically, Raze has the option to be like a Raze op, for instance, so we saw Kang Kang play, um, is possible. Um, the reason why Ray, I think Ray's kind of flew under the radar with Old Breeze as well. Because on Old Breeze, I think she wasn't really played very much, but she was actually quite decent. The reason why is because even though she really struggled in mid, which was honestly one of the worst parts about her, and honestly, she won't have that problem too much anymore. Um, everywhere else on the map, she really was, was like, she really liked B site and she really liked A site. And she could really thrive on those places because her nade was so strong. She could use it to push people into those open spaces like i've already talked about she's really really good in those situations um and she has multiple you know she has she has alt and nade and she also has boom bot 
She has the double satchel to satchel into her spaces too to push people out. If she has like judge or something as well, she can do the same. So like, she's really, really strong at doing all those things. And I think she got kind of underestimated or like under, un sorry, underrated um, on old Breeze. And I think on new Breeze, people are going to start to realize that she is actually quite strong. Uh, although to be fair, I don't think she was this strong on old Breeze. I think she has got stronger because of new Breeze too. Um, but yeah, I think she would, probably would have been a bit here on old Breeze, but I think like towards maybe C even. Um, but I think on new Breeze, she actually is quite strong. Um, on Re Reina, I'm not going to talk about it too much. She doesn't really have much uh, like uh, strat to her. Uh, really she doesn't really have like any util really to talk about but she is really strong and ranked um there's a chance that we see with her played with an operator as well um maybe but i think she's definitely in the bottom of the pile for that that fight um and i think as well um with paper x something playing in competitive there's a chance that we see her um over here as well and i think there are chances that other players are going to pick them up tens might play might pick her up too although i i Today we're going to see Tens play Raider because I think Yoru is in Yoru. Yoru is probably going to get played by Tens, is what I'd imagine. But we'll see. Um, Sage is actually going to be C tier, so the wall is nice. But overall, she's just a very situational agent. Struggles a lot in the general game. Ranked, she'll be fine. Competitive, she won't see play at all. There you go. Uh, Sky is S tier, so Sky can get info really nicely. Her bird, her birds, her dog, and her alt all serve that purpose. Um, her alt can do other things too, so like taking sight flashes can be kill flashes too she's just very versatile and can also get all the info you need mid-round get all the info you need at the start of the round she, she's just really really strong in general she even has a pretty weak ability in the heal um and she still has like well, basically the rest of the kit, kit kind of props that heal up um to be a bit stronger than it actually probably would have, otherwise would be um but generally yeah she's just a really strong agent thrives a lot on this map Rose when it's double uh, walls because she can check the pockets of space really nicely. Generally, just a really strong agent. Um, and really strong on Breeze. Uh, so next, Sova. Sova's like the better version of Fade on this map, basically. Um, she do He does actually have the drone. The drone actually does have the advantage on the dog, I think, in this map. Um, but I think in competitive, that can be alleviated quite a bit because the double walls. Um, but I think in ranked, like, Sova's probably going to be better than Sky um, in some situations. But I think when it comes to having flashes... In, in, in ranked right it's just really nice to have those kill flashes in ranked so probably better to play rank, sky in ranked but Sova does have like his own plays like he can like the, the reveal on a side against the wall is really really strong you can get free kills with it shocks are really strong in this map open sky box like he just loves this map basically um really plays into his strengths and um, his ult actually will struggle to find value at the start of the round i think but i think as time goes on he might get better angles but the there is quite a bit of there's like a lack of the, that type of play that server can make on this map which is maybe his only only fault on this map um then we get viper so viper is also s tier um i think that she is um way too strong in her current state the way that she can keep putting up the wall when the, with the fuel going down and then regening it is just way too broken you can fake going to a certain side like three different times in the round and then still not go there um she is really really strong the actual changes has itself as well to breeze made her stronger because now she can put the orb in mid and then she can put the wall on a site she doesn't have to ever wall mid um even more so if you had like a neon you didn't really have to wall mid anyway um but yeah even on defense as well she has options to wall mid and, and i think the wall mid actually got better as well and um, where she can actually like lurk into like the corners of mid on some rounds to mix up catch lurks off guard etc she's really really strong really really strong definitely the best controller on this map um but i think harbor is quite close to be fair i think he's so so close but i think harbor might actually be better in competitive play when there's like comms involved more set plays involved i think that harbor has more options and more chances to like push up the rest of his team to be strong so i think harbor in general might be the best agent on this map but i think viper in ranked is the best controller on this map then we've got yoru so yoru is an agent I haven't got super, super researched on on this map because it's been a while since this was out and I tried to refresh, but I haven't done a huge amount yet. Um, but basically, I think he's really strong on this map. Um, he can op, he can, so he can op one side, TP to the site, op there as well and get there before the, the, the enemy team goes out to that site. Um, yeah, good rotations in a big map basically means you're going to be quite strong. Um, 
He has the mind games to play as well. Sometimes the double walls can actually play into your mind games, so you can actually play mind games with those double walls quite nicely. Um, things like that he's really, really strong with. with um, he's a very open-ended agent where you kind of have to have a good amount of knowledge of actually playing quite well. Like, the, And there's like different ways to kind of play him, I think. Um, he's not super researched. He's super like difficult to, to play. Um, so I think that... Um, it's going to be fun to figure him out on this map uh, again, I think, for me. Um, so yeah, that's it for the, the tier list. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll see you in my next one.